<laughs> so this is a really exciting free bird chats i can't even believe this is happening Lily. what is going on i don't know we have beyonce, beyonce. <laughs> oh, no. we have beyonce live and in the room. <laughs> live and in the room with us oh it gosh the beautiful, wonderful, super talented, we're making her blush, Louise Dearman. Thank you so much for joining us. My absolute pleasure. This is phenomenal. Louise was one of our first followers and we couldn't believe it. We happy danced for like a year around. <laughs> we did. We did. But we are so excited. We're going to talk about everything from musical theatre to album recordings to motherhood and career balance to Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat and feminism. So shall we jump right there's in? There's a lot to cover. Yeah. There is a lot to there's, cover. There's a lot to cover and not enough Let's one. Let's <laughs> jump in. Let's do it. So Louise, your first big role was in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat as narrator. And I've previously read in a previous interview that you graduated on a Friday and you started rehearsals on a Monday, which I love. And it just feels like such an exciting whirlwind. When you look back and you think of the audition process, contract process, rehearsals to opening night and beyond, what's your advice for Louise back then? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, I think, I think my advice would always be enjoy it more, stress less. And I've always been that way. I, of course I enjoyed it. Of course I did. But I wish I had um, been more relaxed and enjoyed it a lot more because at the end of the day, the entertainment industry, the reason we go into it is because we just love to perform. Mm. Um, and I would stress so much. I would worry about my voice so much because I'm a perfectionist. And mm -hmm. if there is one note that goes wrong or not how I want it to sound, it can destroy the whole show for me. Um, you know, and I've learned to get a bit better at that. But I would just say to myself, you came into this because you love it. Enjoy it. You have been cast as a, in a brilliant role in a, such a fun, brilliant, iconic musical. Um, enjoy it. And don't stress as much. And I say it to all the students that I teach when I can see the anxiety they're going through. And I want to say, listen, why did you want to be in this industry? Mm. And the simple answer is because I love performing. Well, there you go. Yeah. Overanalyzing everything. You've got the job. Enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say. And do you know what? I would say that to myself for a lot of things I did in my 20s. Mm. Even my 30s, I would just say will you just enjoy it a bit more because time flies by and you look back at those things and think how wonderful it was, but you didn't fully appreciate it or enjoy it at the time. And it's such a shame. You just feel so full of nerves that you're not in the moment. There are some people in this industry and in, you know, every industry in the world who are very confident people mm. who, you know, who can go out and do their thing and have absolute confidence in what they're doing. And there are other people like me, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I have not got a lot of self-confidence and people think that's nuts. People think that can't, that, you know, they think that can't be true. You mm. go out there in front of thousands of people and perform, you must be full of confidence. And I'm not, I'm just the sort of person that will overanalyze everything who will, you know, I don't know, wonder if it's good enough and all of those things. And I, I do think it's important to share that because we, you know, people need to understand we are all human. We're all going through these things and it's not easy to mm. put yourself up there. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much for that. That was really raw. I really appreciate that. I know a lot of people will resonate with it because it's so true. Just because you're mm. a performer who go, goes out on stage does not mean you've got 110% confidence. You can no. have a bad day, day that day before the matinee. You could have a rubbish morning. Of course. And we're not robots, you know, and I've said it a million times before. Um, it's, you know, we do the very best that we can. We know that we are very lucky. We are very fortunate to be in the career that we love, but it is our job. You know, it is our job. When we walk through that stage door, that is our office door really. And we go in there and we do our job with, you know, we're just lucky that we get to do something like my, my partner calls it 
professional dress up he's like your job is mint you get dressed up you go out there and you play dress up I'm like yeah I know but it's much much harder than that he appreciates that but he's just like what an amazing job yeah for people outside who aren't in the industry of course it looks like that but there's a lot going on Louise you are a recording artist and we're going to talk about your new album you've had multiple albums which have all been absolutely stunning we're all big fans of your voice and your talent here at Freebird and just like thousands of other fans who've seen you across multiple different stages. But please do tell us about Bedtime Baby, which is releasing soon. And can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to create it? Yeah, I I had my little girl three years ago, unbelievably. She's just turned three and it blows my mind. But um, it was within weeks of having her. Um, I was working on a project which is I won't talk about now but it was kind of a a mummy project before I had her because I just had it in my head but specifically talking about a lullabies album I just knew within weeks of having her I wanted to do it now when you're a new mum all those little things sometimes take a bit of a back seat because it's intense in those early weeks months years but it was definitely something I thought about a lot and and it would always be during night feeds when I would be just sat there feeding her in semi-darkness and thinking, I just want, I want something to soothe her and soothe me. So about a year ago, almost, I contacted Ben Robbins, who's now produced three of my albums, and he is a fantastic music producer. We understand each other very well. We know what we like. He knows what will suit my voice. And I just said, I want to do this Lullabies album. I do not want it to be twee. I want it to be pleasant for both the baby and the parent um, or the grandparent or the auntie or uncle or anybody who's helping with childcare. Um, And so we've created something I'm incredibly proud of, Bedtime Baby, which is a collection of children's songs and lullabies. And some of them are not obvious. There are two original songs on there, and I'm not saying this is a miracle cure, but if just for five minutes, it can give them a bit of a mental just break and just slow everything down and calm everything down, then I feel like it's worth it. So we're releasing next month. I'm so excited. It's one of the most excited, uh, most excited I've ever been about an album because it's it's really different. You know, I I love recording. I really do. It's one of my favourite things in the world to create in a studio. But for once, I didn't have to go in and hit these mega high notes and belt my soul out into the studio. Mm. I could literally sit there on a stool and imagine I was singing to my baby. And that's exactly what I did. Well, congratulations. It sounds beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to listening to it myself because sometimes Uh, I need a breath and I need a minute (laughs) without a child. (laughs) Some people have joked and text me saying, I mean, because is it just for babies? I'm like, no, that's the point. It's kind of, yes, it was that in mind. But actually anyone that just wants someone in their ears to just sing to them while they're laying and trying to relax and go to sleep or anything, I'm hoping that, you know, everybody will enjoy it. Yeah. It was just done with my baby and people with babies in mind so i love it i love it we saw your lovely post on instagram you just touched on this about for anyone juggling parenthood who needs a minute we saw your lovely post on instagram you shout out to the kick-ass parents who are juggling uh, covid19 madness parenthood carrie alice being one of them who also yeah. is one of our supporters at freebird and we adore her are the people you surround yourself with outside of working environments important to you and how do you choose certain artists you may want to work with you may want to record with or just associate with as friendships outside of of the um, industry if that makes sense yeah it's um it's massively important to me to be supportive to other people to my friends to people who are who I just respect and appreciate their talent or what they're doing or the projects they're working on um, as much as they support me. You know, it's just all about people. I think people have this um, misconception that this industry is so cutthroat and so competitive and we're all up against each other. Mm. And of course it's competitive in the same way that every single industry is, Mm. but not in my experience. In my experience, the women in particular, in my little group of leading ladies, We're all so supportive of each other. And I always want to actively show that um, and and lift each other up Mm -hmm. and support each other because, you know, we all appreciate how tough this industry is, 
how tough motherhood is and all of those things. So yeah, it was absolutely just a thing that sprung into my head, like how lovely in the release, because originally it was going to be, we talked about how we can, you know, do some promotional things for the album and I could post, you know, I don't put pictures of Willow's face on social media. That's just, Mm -hmm. that's just my choice. But, um, you know, just little pictures of me holding her as a baby and just all of me. And I said, it's not just about me. Yeah, it's my idea and it was born from having Willow, but actually it is about all of those parents, grandparents, guardians, aunties, uncles, all of those things. Um, It's about all of those people and just helping everybody feel a little bit supported. And that might sound cheesy, but COVID has really changed me in the way that it's just opened opened my eyes a little bit and really made me understand what is important because life just kind of passes without getting too deep life kind of just passes you by Mm. and you sometimes don't just sit and fully understand and appreciate what you've got Mm. and what life is all about and it's really made me just go just sit back understand what's important and and social media especially I have a real love-hate relationship with it I think it's wonderful in so many ways I really do. But there are also many ways that it's damaging and makes you feel like you are not doing enough, that you are not good enough, that you do not look good enough. Um, And it's not good. I have felt that in the past. So I dread to think what young women Mm. feel like, what young people feel like Mm. um, in this new strange world of social media where it seems important and crucial that we wake up and hit Instagram immediately. And I've really tried to stop myself doing that. I've tried to limit my time on it. I've tried to make sure that whatever I post is honest, sometimes raw and supportive. Um, And yes, sometimes it's about I'm doing a concert. I'm promoting an album. Yeah, fair enough. That's what I'm using it for. I'm a business. But I think it's also really important to just reach out and say, this person is bloody brilliant because, and just show support um and it's lovely from my world of producing i have an insider knowledge to a certain extent on the gender pay gap that happens in theater i mean it happens in every industry um between the male and female gender salaries yeah it has there's been multiple multiple research gone into the gender gender pay discrimination in the technical side of theatre but there doesn't seem to be so much published on the performer side of theatre or the musician Mm. side of theatre and we'd love to know as a leading lady do you think you've ever had any insight into your pay being different to another maybe leading males anything like that I've thought about this every time this topic comes up and it's it's a really difficult one because I do know that this happens in Mm. various workplaces have i experienced it firsthand in the musical theater industry i i don't think i have but maybe that is because i don't know what someone else is being paid and if i've but what i do know is that if i've been playing a lead role the lead role in a show Mm. I don't hunt to find out if I'm on more than anybody else. I accept Mm -hmm. a job on what I feel is appropriate for my role. But in most cases, if I do find out anything, if I'm the leading artist, I will be on more money. That is the way it goes. In the same way that if I'm playing a supporting role, I understand the leading role is going to be paid more. I think the only time I've ever really experienced it firsthand, and and it's really difficult, it was a concert scenario. And there were four artists and my agent rightly so said, I'm just checking this is a favoured nations contract. And that means that everybody is paid the same. Everyone's doing the same work and everybody is at the same level in their career. So Mm. that is what should be happening here. Mm. And the answer was no. And the, the reason that was given the justification for it didn't sit with me at all. Um, It just didn't make sense. And so whether I came to the wrong conclusion or not, it kind of, to me, boiled down to he's a man Mm. and he's played a couple of pretty iconic male roles in musical theatre. But sometimes you have to just take a step back and say, without being egotistical, there's my CV. I'm not worth any less or any more than that person. I'm not asking for a penny more. It needs to be equal. And these are the reasons why. 
And it was just a no, but and it wasn't, they're a guy, obviously they're not going to say that. But I had to turn the job down. And that's not just me, you know, just throwing my toys out of the pram. It was a case of, okay, are you going to walk into rehearsals and are you going to walk on stage feeling okay with this and feeling like, well, it's just, just the way it is. Or are you going to walk out there feeling devalued, disrespected, annoyed, mm. resentful? And it was the latter. I just thought I can't do it. And the only way things are going to change, I guess, is if people do that. I know it's difficult. People can't just be turning down work. And it wasn't that my pay was bad. It wasn't that. It was just that it, it didn't feel right. And the reason yeah. behind it didn't sit well. Um, and that was really disappointing for me because whether I'm just a bit naive and just live with my head in the clouds, I don't know. But I just hadn't, I honestly, if I'm being truthful, hadn't really thought about it before. Mm. Um, and it kind of blows my mind a bit that it even happens. And I know you're saying that in the industry that, you know, that you're in and you've seen it firsthand. It just, I just don't get it. Mm. I just don't get how, I would love to just ask the question to the people who pay mm. the money. Mm. Why is that? Is that, is that person more experienced? No. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I don't understand. What, what, are, I don't they know on, what are they on stage more than I am? Are they having more rehearsal time, but you're not paying this wage at rehearsal? No. You know, what, what are they doing more PR maybe? Yeah. Like what? No, no, no. Okay. Well, what's then it putting what them to? No, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's just all about what is right, what is fair, just it, regardless. I can remember the first moment I knew I was being paid less than my male counterparts. And it, like what you said, I was like, I was, I, you know, I was very aware of the topic then, but I just couldn't believe that we were all of the same level in the company all with the, I had actually in terms of looking at the three of us I was at the me medium level with experience yeah. one was way behind and it was like why am I 4k less than you and 6k less than you it and just does I mean ha really just, how dare someone have the nerve to just think that that is okay and you're right it causes you're absolutely right and I wish you know moving forward that mantra if you can do it to turn down that job or stand up for yourself if you can do it do it if you're in a position where you're comfortable and you can make that decision stand by it because you do end up resentful and you yeah. do end up frustrated and you don't perform i don't perform my best when i have that energy no that's the thing sometimes you sort of think well if i don't know i don't know but actually it's not fair that that is even happening yeah Continuing on with the theatre industry, away from the negative of pay, but focusing on the positive of having a family, motherhood, fatherhood, and having that balance. Mm. We know so many women and men who leave the industry permanently normally have, it, have this occur after having children, particularly those who tour theatre, not just mm. residency in the West End. Those decisions come from maybe a lack of accommodation from the employer, a lack of flexibility with production schedules, or even affording childcare. Do you think there's enough support for new mothers in the theatre industries? And did you ever struggle with this, if at all, in the last, did you say three years since having Willow? Yeah. Um, so it's slightly different with me because I, I, I made a decision, my partner and I made a decision that when we had Willow, I would take a step back from musicals in particular and that is because and I know why people just get back into it as soon as they can it's mm -hmm. it's our work it's our job it's our livelihood and sometimes you just want to get back into it and there's nothing wrong with any of those things we I had the luxury of <clears throat> not having to not having to do that um but I chose to just because I know the commitment it takes to do eight shows a week mm -hmm. I know how much I throw myself into it and it becomes all consuming. I know how much I stress about my voice and looking after it and being quiet and steaming mm. and all of those things. Um, and I was trying to picture myself even like, you know, six months after having Willow going back into a show and I just, I couldn't, I didn't feel ready. Um, but I, I am fortunate in that I have a, a wonderful concert career and I work with some of the greatest orchestras and conductors all over the world. And 
it means that I can have a, a crazy busy month and then nothing for a month. And so it goes in waves mm. and everything seems like it has a little, a, a short contract, you know, and I can, I don't panic too much. Um, I have auditioned for a few things in the past year. Um, sometimes I get asked to audition for things and I just have to, I look at it really differently now I'm a mum. I look at the bigger picture. I look at, okay, so I'm going to have to put her into childcare um, on additional days, like matinee days, maybe have somebody to look after her late afternoon until Andrew gets home. All of those things you have to take into consideration. I'm doing a workshop at the moment of a brilliant new musical called The Good Enough Mums Club. And all of the actresses in it are all mums. And the way that the producers and writers have been so accommodating with us has been mm -hmm. superb. It's all, it, all the way through it has been, if you can't do it because your kid's ill this day, then don't, don't come into the Zoom call. Or if you, you know, you, they've just been so brilliant. Um, and it does make you feel great because it means you just feel like you can achieve everything without guilt. Mm. We shouldn't feel guilty for being parents mm. um, because that is that is the most important thing looking out for mm. our family our children um, and I'd love to do another musical but I know that it has to be the right thing and I know that it has to either well both it has to be a role that I really want to do a team I really want to work with um, there has to be so many more reasons to say yes and I don't think that's a negative thing I think that makes it even better mm. and even kind of um like I'm in it even more than I was before mm. because I really really want to be and I'm and it's worth making those little sacrifices maybe not putting Willow to bed mm. which I you know I would hate but if it was for something that I felt I really just had to do for myself or for us as a family then I would do it. Of course I would. But um, I think there is more to be done. But I've, I, in my experience, I've only had a positive experience. Which when is it comes great. To, but yeah, I don't, hopefully in answer to your question, I, I don't feel like there's been a lot of negative. I mean, there was, there was the question about um, job sharing that I've had mm -hmm. with many leading lady friends of mine, how so many of us would be much more up for going back into a show if it was job sharing. Mm. And we only see it as a positive thing. You know, we're not asking for the same money to do half the job. We, we know that there'd be a pay cut of what we'd normally get, mm. like in half. But for so many of us, that would be doable because it means that you're doing half the week. And why would it be a negative thing if you've got two really well established experienced yeah. leading ladies i mean yeah. to me it's a no-brainer you're not you know you're not um if you're in musical theater you're used to you know understudies being thrown on and you work around it you just mm. work with it and i personally find it exciting and challenging when you're opposite somebody else I'm, i know you get into a bit of a security with somebody and and you build really strong relationships with people on stage <clears throat> but it's not a negative thing to have that. So I do wish, I do wish that producers would consider it a lot more. And also to bear in mind that it would probably mean that your leading artists would be off sick less. True. Because there's half the workload. True. And I mean, so, that's, it's a huge avenue for potential. Yeah. I think so. It's not a bad idea at all. When you think of the marketing, the ticket sales for people who would That's want to see those two leading ladies in that <clears> show, <throat> yeah, you know, they might buy double the tickets. I know that sounds exactly. a little bit crazy, That's, but no, I personally know. Like, if you look at, I don't know, Rachel Tucker and I, and I had this conversation before, and we wanted to just push this idea for a show, and um, we both were so up for doing it, and we were both saying, wouldn't it be brilliant? Because, of course, she has her hardcore group of fans, and I do, mm -hmm. but lots of them cross over and support mm -hmm. both of us, and you're right, it would come to both. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, I it's, think a, it's great. We're on to a yeah. winner. 
A huge part of Freebirds Core is activism for women and girls, highlighting the change that is needed in the arts and the creative industries. And we want to light a fire to ensure best practice and equality, as you said, for all of us. Yeah. Your positivity and light, Louise, is absolutely infectious. So rather than asking you what would you like to see change, I'd love to know what are the elements of the industry that work for you? that you have enjoyed being a part of and what makes you proud to be in theatre? Oh, loads of things make me feel proud. Um, the hardcore respect that we have for each other as performers and, um, yeah, and like I said earlier about this whole idea that we're just backstabbing mm bitchy humans who don't support I just haven't yeah listen I yes I have seen it but it's so rare the car the shows that I have done the cast that I have been involved in the friends I have made the really tight groups of people and the support that has shown and I'm talking you know when you share a dressing room with in one case all of your cast members you get to know people really really well um and you get to understand that you need to just be very honest about what you want to diffuse any situations like. If someone's playing their music loud and someone mm. else hates it, it's just about saying, George, well, sorry, would you mind? And having respect for each other and saying, that's cool, turn it off. And you know, I've, I was in a dressing room with, I think like eight girls in Guys and Dolls in London. And the personal things that you go through, I will never ever forget those experiences, the support when everyone rallies around each other to support each other. It's beautiful and bizarre. Mm. I don't know any other industry that are like that, that are, who are so, people feel so comfortable at being so open and trusting with their feelings and their experiences. Um, that's what I love about our industry. I love the passion. I love the understanding of co the commitment that it takes. I love the respect for people's talent. Um, I love the show of support when you're not in a show. And again, I've experienced this during this whole situation with COVID, you know, the people reaching out to each other, people that I don't even know that well. I've dropped a message on Instagram or something and just said, you cool, you're right. And people have done the same to me. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen anywhere else, but I am saying that in our industry, people are a lot more open to doing that, I think, personally. Mm. And that is really wonderful. Mm. And how we've all come together to show our disgust at, at how the arts are being treated in this whole pandemic, to just rally and fight for what we love, what we believe in, what we understand bring, brings massive benefits to our economy billions of pounds um that fight and that passion that everybody i know has shown is so extraordinary and so humbling and so emotional and to feel like you're part of this really special team mm. um those are the things that i love mm. i will never ever regret coming into this industry even through the tough times the rough times not earning any money auditioning for months on end and not getting anywhere um the the good times by far outweigh any bad times um yeah and it just makes me smile when i think of all the different scenarios i've been through where you've just got a whole new level of the support and respect mm -hmm. and appreciation mm -hmm. it's it's very very special our industry is incredibly special yeah. and that's why we feel so passionately about holding on to it to, m to make sure that we we come back and that we are able to come back we have been hit so severely by this but i know that we'll come back through it yes. it will take time and we have been damaged yeah but we will come back through it because we are bloody fighters yeah well we Absolutely. will make it happen we're planners, we're builders, we're rebuilders, we're dancers, we're happiness, we're, we're love, light and magic. And you're absolutely yeah. right. My, my favorite elements of what we do is when I rock up to see one of the shows that we've made. And 
there's someone from the lighting team over there talking to the dance captain and they're having a laugh and there's yeah. the head of wardrobe with the leading lady and they're and they're they're just a family and it's I, a I I always I always just think this you know it's so great when we make these shows and we produce these shows but that's that's the magic and their happiness yeah. is contagious on stage no matter what you're watching yeah and especially in musical theater obviously not in like a you know Agatha Christie play but um, and <laughs> And but the that other, is very musical theatre. Every, every single show that I've finished, there are proper tears. Yeah. From, from all departments. And there's a real love there and a real kind of feeling that you've shared something really special. And you know you're adults. You know that mm. you're going to see these people again. You're not, you know, moving across the other side of the world or giving up the industry. But there's just something about breaking that really special team because it's intense for such a a long period of time you know whether yeah. that's a six week run or a year long tour it doesn't matter that's such an intense amount of time to spend with someone we're there for the main reason that we're there is because we just love what we do yeah we are we are fortunate there are many people who do a job because it's a job and because it pays the bills um and yeah part of that is why we do what we do yeah but there's also a much deeper reason for what we do louise i could talk to you all night long oh, thank you so, so oh my god thank you so much you've been so wonderful to take the time out of your day to speak to little old us and we really appreciate your support from day one. Oh, absolutely you've fully got my support and i just hope that the success of free bird grows and grows and i'm behind you all the way Thank you. Thank you. You Pleasure. have been phenomenal, Beyonce. Thank you so much. Please, Beyonce. Beyonce. You got okay. Luke Dearman. <laughs> Thank you so much, Louise. My pleasure.